Hey everyone, it's Tomnex here, and in today's video, I'm going to bring you the ultimate RTX 3070 PC that you could build right now in 2021. For this PC build, we're going to be working with a budget of around $1,300, and I built this PC back in November for just under $1,300. So in this video, I'm going to be going over the parts I used for this PC build and why I chose them. And in the end of the video, I'm going to sum up my final thoughts. And lastly, before we get into the video, feel free to leave a like. And if you're feeling super generous, you can also subscribe to your channel as well. So before we get into the part list, I'll just drop all the links to the parts I used in the PC down below. Starting off with the processor, I went with the Intel i9-9900K. This is an 8-core, 16-threaded processor that has a base clock of 3.6GHz and a turbo clock speed of 5.0GHz. I got this processor for a very good price for only $300 at Micro Center, and it's still actually priced at $300 right now. When I did some research and looked up the benchmarks, I saw that the i9-9900K actually performed similar to the Ryzen 5 5600X and sometimes outperformed it in other games, including Fortnite, Call of Duty, Modern Warfare, Assassin's Creed Odyssey, and Horizon Zero Dawn. Overall, I think the i9-9900K is an excellent CPU given at the $300 price point. For the motherboard, I went with the Gigabyte Z390 Aorus Pro Wi-Fi. In my opinion, I think this is the perfect motherboard to pair with this i9 CPU. It's definitely going to be good for overclocking because it has some very nice VRMs. I can't really get a really close up look at this motherboard since I already installed the thing in my computer. But the main features of this motherboard is that it contains 6 system fan headers, 2 RGB headers, and 2 ARGB headers. I think this is the best Z390 motherboard you can find in the market right now. I don't really think there's any other Z390 motherboard that has better features than this motherboard, costs less, and has RGB. For the CPU cooler, I went with a AIO liquid cooler. The one I have is a single fan radiator from Cooler Master. I probably should have went with a 240mm AIO to get better cooling, but so far I haven't had any temperature issues with the CPU with this 120mm AIO, so I think it's going to be fine. For the RAM, I went with 32GB of G-Skill DDR4 rated at 3200MHz. This memory kit is out of stock right now, so I'll just simply drop an alternative down in the description below. I'll also leave a link down below to a kit that has 16GB of RAM instead if you want that. For storage, I went with a 500GB SSD SK Hynix. I was able to get this for a pretty good deal for only $45, which I think is a really good price. If this SSD went up in price, you're most likely going to have to find an alternative, which shouldn't be that hard because storage options are more subjective. For power, I went with the EVGA 750W BQ power supply. This is semi-modular, so it's great for cable management. For this PC build, I didn't really use much of the cables. Power supply has a lot of cables and has even more cables than other power supplies. So if you plan to hook up a lot of storage devices, then this is something you should consider. For around $80, I think it's a really solid PSU, and it's definitely one I recommend. Next, I went with the EVGA DG77 case. This is ATX mid-tower, so it supports our motherboard form factor. I was able to get this case for only $56 at Micro Center, but it's out of stock anyway, so you can't really get it. But there are tons of alternatives out there that you can go for. But whatever case you end up picking, make sure that the form factor is ATX. And finally, last but not least, we have our RTX 3070. The one I have is the Founders Edition from NVIDIA. I like the design aesthetic of the graphics card. It's also made of some durable material, which is pretty nice. This is the Founders Edition. I got it for the exact MSRP of $500. Performance it delivers is pretty much similar to a 2080 Ti. So that concludes our PC part list. And overall, I was really satisfied of how the PC turned out. I went with a green color scheme that works really well with my RGB fans and the motherboard. By the way, one of the RGB fans I used was the one from Corsair, so I just want to give a shout out to my friend for giving me one of his Corsair fans. So that's it for today's video, let me know in the comments what you think about this PC build, and I'll see you all in the next video.